Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to our bedroom, bathroom, half of the house renovation of our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home. Today is a pretty big day for us. It's one that we've looked forward to for quite a while. What do we get to do today? We get to start putting up drywall. While we've been staring at the insulation for probably a week or two now, I am very much ready to get some solid walls up and make this place start to feel like part of a house again. Make it official with some purple drywall. Yeah, <laughs> and then very quickly get rid of the purple. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. We have prepped our wall. We have the breaker turned off for the power there. We've got the wires running in the electrical box and everything's cleaned up, buttoned up. We're ready to measure and cut our first piece of drywall. For installing, or rather cutting out the boxes for outlets, we have a cool little tool. This is what we used for Angela's Soap Shack build. It's called Blind Mark. It is really, really cool. And I'll let you explain it because you, I think, like it a lot more than I do. So you have this little piece and this is what goes in the outlet box as two little pins that will go into the holes on the outlet box. You make sure your arrows are lined up and then you can snap it on the outside of the drywall and then make a mark and cut it out. And it's about, this is the same size as the outlet so you're good to go. Yep. So one of the things we wondered when we got this thing is how strong are the magnets. Let's just, I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll see if it works. Three quarter inch plywood. Is it strong enough to go between there? I mean, it's, it's it. not strong, but it's holding. So if you want to clad your walls in three quarter inch plywood and still cut out your outlet boxes, you can use this tool for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It is. Uh, not a sponsored promo or anything. This is a tool we bought with our own money and we've enjoyed it. So we're just sharing with you guys. And it does come with three of the little things that go in the outlets. So should you have more than one gang, is that what it's called? Gang box, box. or whatever? Then you can still do them all at once. You don't have to move it over and stuff. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me We meant to be in the great outdoors Forever free Take my pencil out of my hat. By the way, these are my favorite pencils. I don't think you like them as much, but for this kind of work, I love them. They're like the retro pencils from when we were in school, where you take the little tiny lead out the top and you feed it in the bottom. Well, I've messed it up. Okay, fresh lead. <laughs> I like them because they're strong, like not mechanical pencil, so they're strong, but replaceable. I don't know. Segwaying on a pencil talk. And they just happen to be Minecraft, which our boys love. I, I, I've been known to play a little bit too. <laughs> kind of cool little thing, little thing we can do together as father sons. Mm -hmm. Veg out time. Not that I get much of that anymore. We're busy doing this. Well, we have our first two sheets on the wall, and things are looking quite purple. Which way you want to head next? That way, and stop, or this way and get into some pretty difficult cuts. I guess go ahead for the difficult. All right. 
Let's go. This will at least be one sheet, which is good. Is that less than eight feet? Yeah. Or at eight feet? Should be. Well, your guess. What's your guess? Eight foot two. Eight foot two. All right. Seven foot three, <laughs> yes. eight foot two. Okay, eight foot. <laughs> wow. And I said eight foot two because that would just be our luck. We're going to go ahead and continue working on this front part of the house. We've got some pretty complicated mathematical cuts, you know, as far as the taper or the vault of our ceiling, plus the alcove and everything, or bay window, whatever you want to call it. So, we are going to put you guys in a corner on time lapse because that's the easiest way. You can stay over there. We don't have to watch you, kind of put you in a playpen, and we'll continue working, but still let you see it with some interesting music. If anything happens cool, we'll stop and let you guys know for sure. Otherwise, just measuring, cutting, repeating, attaching it in between there, that kind of stuff. Game begin. Well, I guess I pushed my luck with that second one, cutting the window hole out and everything. There's only like an inch and a half holding that thing on the side. Had it too much of an angle, it kind of collapsed on itself. Fooey. But I can still salvage the pieces and everything. It's just gonna mean a lot more finesse work with the mud. But that's what it's all about. Hello and welcome to the next day. Actually, this is the day after next. We took a day off and went on a little road trip, but that'll be talked about in a future video because it's not about renovation. So on that one day, we were actually able to get a lot of this room drywalled or a lot of drywall installed. Actually more than we would have thought we would have given, I kind of was on a mission and very focused on just getting it done. But still, it went a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. Thankfully, I didn't really have any miscuts or mess ups. Of course, I had some places where I had to trim up and recut and like, you know, work things into place. But we didn't lose any major sheets or anything, which is great. The hardest part of the whole job was actually doing the window cutouts because I chose to make one full sheet with just the window cutout. I didn't piece together top, bottom, left, and right. 
word on the street in the land of drywallologists, which I just look into, I am by no part a member of. They say if you have cracks around your windows or a way to prevent cracks around your windows is to not have any seams in that area. I don't know if that's true or not, but I can use all the help I can get. So I put a little bit of elbow grease work into it to try and give myself a better result in the end. Now that was all fine and dandy for the right window, but for the left one, I uh, kind of broke it. <laughs> not intentionally, it kind of collapsed upon its own weight. So it's a mess down on the bottom area, but at least the top area, the top piece and the sides are one sheet. So if I have any cracks, it should be down below, which may be hidden if we do some kind of a built-in seating there. I don't know. So it is what it is. I can fix all of that with the joint compound and, you know, mudding and all that. So that's no problem. But otherwise, it was a pretty easy and straightforward process. As you can see, it's not perfect, but this is how drywall with me generally looks. However, it can all be finished and made nice with the finishing process, which will be a little bit later, thank goodness. So if I was to continue to work logically as I have been going, I would next be putting a piece on this wall here. However, the whole stack of drywall is going to really block me from installing that and getting it, well, fitting me and everything in the place. So I'm going to skip ahead and start drywalling the bathroom wall or the wall that separates the bedroom from the bathroom. So let me move my tools out of the way and we will start working there. I am in no way a drywallologist. I didn't go to the school of drywall. I didn't get a degree in sheetrockisms. <laughs> so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt and know it's just from me to you as a DIYer. My tools I use for cutting all the drywall is a utility knife. Don't cheap out as far as going through your blades. Don't be worried about going through, I don't know, a pack of 10 in this project. A sharp blade will make all the difference in how easily and quickly and cleanly things are cut and they're pretty affordable so just be okay and willing to flip them and toss them when they get dull. In addition to that, you need a pencil, you need a tape measure, and then a straight edge. The straight edge you see me using, the big silver bar, is actually from an old table saw I had. It was a piece of the fence. It is like a massive chunk of aluminum that is straight so I've always kept it. They also sell framing squares. One second. One of these guys, this is a framing square or drywall square, T-square, drywall T-square, whatever, all of the above. These are also useful and handy. I just prefer to use my big table saw bar because that's kind of what I'm used to using. Um, other than that, that's about it as far as cutting and everything. As far as attaching the drywall to the walls, I'm using my drill and inch and 5 eighths drywall screws. You can also use drywall nails, although saying that, I opened a whole can of worms. When we did our kitchen renovation, I used drywall nails. And oh boy, the comments I got about, you're going to have nail popped, you're going to have this and that and the other. It's been a year and a half and we have zero issues. So nails and screws, whatever you use, if it's done correctly and applied and installed right, you're not going to have problems. So use what you want. I'm not recommending you or telling you one way or the other, but for this job, for this room, I'm using screws. From the moment that we met You're worth the wait Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know mm -hmm. 
Talk for hours and never slept Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watched the sun as it slowly crept From the horizon to the place we met Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know Now in all things are going pretty good. I got the two sheets on the wall you see behind me and I got the outlet put back in, the breaker turned on so we can have our work light again. Um, a few people have asked about these work lights. These are the 50 watt model. I think they sell a lower and a higher wattage. We kind of went for what was in the middle ground. Um, they are really nice and bright. Although when you're working, especially in the evening, you could always go brighter. The purple drywall is making this room feel a lot darker but it's just temporary. It'll go away when we're done. So there's your random squirrel moment about lights. I have one piece to cut here for this side. It should be one sheet and it'll be good. And then I'll use the leftover from that sheet and do that side of the wall. And that will make everything done behind you and there and there with the exception of the pocket door and the parts above. I'm alone. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. We are going to my brother's place today to help him work on a lean-to roof for a barn for a tractor. So I'm trying to hurry up really quick. Angela and the boys are at their homeschool co-op. I think I've got maybe another 45 minutes till I need to stop, clean up, and then we hit the road. So let's go. Well, we have reached yet again another milestone, and I have to talk a little bit quieter because the echo is back in the room, but the boys' room is completely drywalled. Was it hard work for you? It was terrible. <laughs> I think this was mostly my job. It was. You helped a little bit the first day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first day we did a big chunk. I forgot about that. 
And then the second day I did what I did and today we finished it out. So all in all, three of our work days, but not eight hour days. Hopefully I'll be able to help with the mudding a little bit more. What do you think of the purple? It's a little dark. Yeah, it is. We have both the work lights on, plus the windows are doing their thing, and it's still kind of dark in here. It makes me want to just paint it white. Just We will. Just to make it go pow. <laughs> we will. Um, I think for our next steps, I think, I don't know, I should probably not even say. I don't know if we're going to be finishing the drywall next or not. We hadn't quite decided yet. Well, I guess that's about it. Um, drywall is pretty much what you see is what you get. It doesn't take a lot of tools. It just takes measuring and a little bit of time. It does make a mess of everything. There's a little coat of white dust on everything in here. Yeah. And if you sweep, you make clouds. No sweeping. <laughs> As always, we appreciate you watching and we love to see your comments. Please leave them below. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. In here. <laughs> or in there. All right. Or over there. Bye. Bye. You're going to have to look really, really close, but somewhere in this room, Angela is here. <laughs> Sorry, you're just wearing the rice shirt. <laughs> I am. Hard to do one handed. And bring her back in. But anyway, that was a whole lot of jabbering. It's kind of a weird little object. Actually, it's drywall. We appreciate you guys watching as always. That's totally your line, so you do that part. Tired. Framing squares. One second. Ah! Oh, the loud is so loud. Uh, so loud. That's what happens when your phone scares you. The Bluetooth speaker. One of these guys. This is a framing square.